My mom is a hardworking, strong woman who has achieved many things in her life. But there's one important thing that she does not know how to do, reading and writing. She grew up during difficult times in Korea and never had a chance to learn to read and write. I've had first-hand experience of life challenges when you lack basic literacy skills. So I'm passionate about enhancing children's reading and writing development. And based on extensive evidence, I'm compelled that oral language proficiency is the key foundation to literacy acquisition. The conversation about oral language proficiency is important because so many children come to school without sufficient oral language resources. So today, I'm going to talk about three things. First, oral language is essential in literacy acquisition. Second, oral language is a complex skill. Third, oral language should be taught explicitly and systematically. This will lead to enhanced reading and writing development and improved academic <coughs> achievement. The nation's report card, NAEP, has consistently shown that two-thirds of American students cannot read or write proficiently. Then what does it take to develop proficient reading skill? According to a large body of evidence, Reading comprehension requires two things, word reading skill and oral language comprehension. Research in the last four decades has focused on and revealed what it takes to develop word reading skill. Now, we're beginning to understand about what it takes to develop oral language comprehension. To illustrate that, I'm going to tell you a story. There lived a miser who saved up all his money. Before he died, he told his wife, when I die, I want you to put all the money in the casket so I can take it with me to afterlife. <laughs> One day, he died. His wife was sitting next to her closest friend at the funeral. When the ceremony was over, she put a shoebox in the casket. And her friend said, you didn't actually put all the money there, did you? And the wife said, I sure did. I gathered all the money, put it in my bank account, and wrote him a check. <laughs> <laughs> Your laughing indicates that you comprehended the story. How were you able to do that? You understood the meanings of vocabulary used in the story, such as miser or save. You understood the meanings of combinations of words. That's grammatical knowledge. You were able to hold linguistic information in your memory temporarily and process, continue, uh, process new incoming information at the same time. That's working memory. Your last thing indicated that you understood that the wife did not really give the money away. The story did not explicitly say it. Then how do you know? You know it because for that to happen, the check has to be cashed, and a dead person cannot cash the check. So that means that requires your background knowledge and linking that background knowledge to the story. That's inference making and reasoning. This story illustrates, illustrates that oral language comprehension is no simple task. And instead, it draws on a highly complex set of language and cognitive skills, such as working memory, attentional control, vocabulary, perspective taking, and so on. Despite the importance of oral language, however, for many children, the language resources they bring to school are not sufficient to support the development of proficient reading and writing skills. Studies have consistently shown that children who come from low socioeconomic backgrounds have less than ideal oral language proficiency. Children who come from homes where English or mainstream English are not spoken are also disadvantaged in oral language and also literacy skills. Evidence is clear that the best way to acquire oral language is through exposure to sophisticated oral language. Children need to hear sophisticated vocabulary and sentences every day. Teachers should not water down their oral language when talking to children. Instead, 
they need to use and teach words like sophisticated, exceed, hypothesis, consummate. Teachers need to engage ch um, children in meaningful conversations and discussions and promote higher order thinking skills, such as perspective taking. Order, oral language should be taught explicitly. Unfortunately, however, many classroom observation studies have shown that oral language is rarely taught. In our study with primary grade classrooms, we found that on average, only five minutes are spent on teaching oral language. Five minutes. Studies have also shown that many teachers lack knowledge about oral language structure. And importantly, students who are taught by these teachers do not achieve high reading skills. Many teachers and teacher candidates do not about, learn about oral language acquisition or oral language instruction in the teacher training program. To conclude, evidence is robust and undeniable that oral language is at the core of literacy acquisition. So I propose to you today that oral language should be taught explicitly and teachers should learn about how to teach oral language in the classroom. This is a critical and necessary step to enable our children to read and write for success and for a bright future. My mom never had a chance to fully develop her potential, but this should not be the story of our children. Oral language begets literacy, so teach oral language to children. Thank you.